at the end of the day, we are all raised in a white supremacist, capitalist, uh, homophobic, imperialist patriarchy. All of us, all of us, none of us are without that residue. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies, gentlemen, scoundrels, scallywags, and ruddy bounders. This bally old rotter is Mr. F. D. Signifier, and he'll correct your pronouns for you. And this is Kidology, who lives in a dungeon, hoping to attract some enchanting and courageous cat burglar who steals from the rich and gives to himself. Or perhaps some mysterious Hungarian count. What she got was this gentleman and his snaggletooth acolytes, vomiting forth accusations of transphobic dog whistles. Grab yourself a whiskey, a cigar and a buxom wench and enjoy. The left needs to up its game. The left are heading toward Napoleon territory, and by that I don't mean toward territory of Napoleon Bonaparte, the Emperor of France. I mean Comrade Napoleon, the Berkshire boar from Orwell's Animal Farm. Animal Farm started off as a dream, a vision of a world all but free of human beings. This world would be one where no animal must tyrannize over his own kind. Weak or strong, clever or simple, we are all brothers. All animals are equal. The intention was bright, glistening in the opening chapter of Orwell's novella. However, we all know the ending. And this is an ending which, regrettably, I'm increasingly seeing repeat itself among those whom purport to be on the side of progress, on the side of equality, and on the side of visionaries. The left. Okay, so to give some background, this is a uh, kidology. Um, Kidology is a uh, black queer British woman. I think everybody on here has we like watched her content. Yeah, I think all of us at a certain point started to hear, and I, and I don't know if it's fair being charitable. I don't want to call them dog whistles at this at this point because when you're not aware that mm -hmm. things are dog whistles, the stat yeah that's how they work. They're the status quo uh, angles on certain issues. Dog whistles, it is absolutely true that there are truly vile right-wing media outlets and truly vile right-wing people spewing hate and spewing genuine racism. But you are losing the mainstream with your focus on minute rather than focusing on what matters. I was rather sad to read a few, a few days ago that a columnist who I follow quite regularly, who writes for The Guardian, Hadley Freeman, has resigned because she is sort of the creme de la creme of The Guardian and everything that it tends to stand for. An appreciation of identity politics, of diversity, of our changing world, an appreciation for progress, criticism of elites, as well as feminism, particularly third wave, I guess in a way we could say that we're heading toward fourth wave feminism. And she writes incredibly well. Even though I don't agree with her on a lot of things, I still can appreciate that she is an exceptional journalist. And so it's it's Coming. Her resignation that I heard on Women's Hour was truly shocking. But you yeah. are saying that you specifically were not allowed uh, to, to write about this. Are you saying others were and you weren't? No, um, I was specifically not allowed. I was specifically told by a Trigger that warning for transphobia coming. 2019, I think. And others weren't either. I know of multiple reporters who asked if they could interview, for example, Maya Forsatter during her case, Alison Bailey, um, Jester Walls. I asked about interviewing J.K. Rowling uh, and Martina Navratilova, and we were all told no. Meanwhile, you know, the, the pick. All right. I don't really have to go. I feel like y'all heard the dog. <laughs> so there. <laughs> <laughs> oh. That's right, you ruddy blighter. Well spotted, old chap. Bravo. Not everything that you disagree with is a dog whistle. Maybe what you are hearing is not dog whistles, but people with legitimate concerns. I'd suggest you have drifted so far from reality, you have actually left the universe folk but you already know about the guardian you already have this sort of connotation mm -hmm. and in that you either have two ways to look at it right if you kind of know the dog whistle you're like well being gender critical really tends to lean to like why in what capacity would you want to interview a gender critical person in which 
the gar- the guardian exactly. would be like, no. Right? Like right. if you if you know that dog guardian you, of all places. Right. The like guardian. You're, you're gonna know that answer. But if you don't think that way because you haven't been exposed to it, you're like, huh. Well, I learned you're supposed to let both sides speak. It's crazy that my beloved guardian isn't going to let the, like, it is, is so what, what seems like to them a black and white suppression of what they only hear, right? That's even a great term they use, gender critical, um, against, like, you know, people that are uh, pro trans people. Right. For, so for, she, for those, she also for calls that... it gender realist, too. Like, when she, like, if, later mm. on in the video, I have lived with many trans people in many different houses. You don't give rights to one group of people by taking them away from another group of people, such as banning the words woman and the word mother. In Australia, seven members of the Australian Breastfeeding Association have been accused of harassment and intimidation for referring to themselves as mothers on a private Facebook group, causing some to consider suicide and self-harm. By using the word mother rather than parent, several members reported feeling bullied, unsafe, harassed, and intimidated. One of the ladies said, being accused of harassment and intimidation for referring to myself as a mother is one of the most distressing things I have ever experienced, and I don't understand how it was ever allowed to go so far. A few seconds more, she's like, she says that she that they're called gender critical, and she's like, I like to say gender realist. That's what she says. Oh, um, she, oh, <laughs> yeah, she yeah it was pretty. It was. I, it was like, hmm, why won't they let you write these articles? I wonder. I wonder why. Perhaps because they were completely deranged, even by the standards of the lunatic asylum that is the Guardian. Just a thought. Um, um I, 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 and you see the clip, and it's like, oh, that makes sense. Um. So this is this is the fundamental frustration I think I have with most with most of this whole video, right? I know Petal, Kidology's video is just a cesspit of hate. It's driven me to the whiskey bottle. And I'm glad that we got to it here because then we just talk about it. When when you when you live when you're trying to do things like not even necessarily like be an anti-fascist or do anti-fascism, right? When you're just trying to resist all of the various bigotries that there are, which I would argue is anti-fascism, but I just want to make sure there's a distinction between that specific thing and what I'm talking about. Various bigotries, anti-fascism. I do truly feel sorry for you, my poor chap. It requires you to oppose those things, right? It's not about like, oh, we need to hear them out. We need to hear them out. Like, no, like that ideology I mean, you could argue that it's literally just fascism, but they overlap with fascists enough that the line is not them. Like, no, you, you don't polite fascism out of existence. All right. It's not a debate. Nah, you, you suppress that shit. You fight yeah. that. That's how this works. It's not a debate. You suppress that. You fight that. You are trying to suppress other people's freedom of speech and impose your own words and belief upon them. That is fascism. Yeah, and she characterizes it throughout the video. And you all see, we're not gonna watch the whole video, but she characterizes it as laziness from the left Mm -hmm. and how we just kind of dismiss these perspectives that we have not, and this is not like shit we made up, right? This is the medical science here in the West. This is, a good generation of uh, sociological, psychological study. Um, this is this is not like, you know, I, I know people have issues. I don't know uh, Zeno pronouns, which is a a new manifestation that I'm perfectly fine with. By the way, I just want to be clear. But it's not like something that's just like brand new. It's mm-hmm. just brand new to people who are moderates, mm-hmm. to people who are. Mm-hmm status quo who are invested in the status quo to the hegemon Um, to to the hegemon right and is there something to packaging that messaging more efficiently sure but it's very insidious to present this both sides uh perspective oh i agree fd who are these fascist bastards who want to present both sides of an argument Let's have them hung, drawn, and quartered at once. 
it's very insidious to present both sides? Well, how about we ignore your side and just present the other side? Of, I left the Guardian because they wouldn't let me interview certain people. Was, like, who the, are those? The, the, <laughs> I left <laughs> the Guardian because they wouldn't let me be more transphobic than the Garvin, than the Guardian <laughs> is so willing to tolerate. That's what the fuck you just said to me. Yeah, yeah. And the Guardian, that bastion of transphobia, according to both of you. You silly little children need to get out into the real world more. You really do. And I, I, one thing I, I want to be critical of is that we, especially in, in, our, in the what the video essay is sphere, we're we're analytical, we're analyzers, mm -hmm. and what we will do because that's how we're trained is extrapolate significant things and meaning from maybe small, maybe tenuously connected mm -hmm. pieces, right? But this isn't that, and I just want to be clear. I'm going to try to make the distinction between moments when we extrapolate and moments where I think it's very loud. Mm. So Kidology was very clear. She admires this woman. She loves the Guardian. <laughs> oh, I agree, darling. The Guardian, that far-right rag. Both Attila the Hun and Genghis Khan have written to the editor, imploring them to be more compassionate, more left-wing. I mean... And this, well, and this well, she played this particular clip, you know. That, that's what I'm so, saying. Like, like what you like, like, whatever. We, we talk about that later, but... Gen you you gender critical feminism or gender realism like that's so many people have already taken that apart that we're kind of to the point where that's just it's not an ideology that we debate with right because this it's like that's that's it's ju it's either just fascism or it's right next to fascism if you just look at who the Before people who espouse this ideology like associate with how this Ah, yes, fascist, 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 blah, blah, blah. If all else fails, call your opponent a fascist or a racist or some other horse shit like that. That'll win the argument for you. It gives you clues right? about what the ideology like actually is. Rest. Don't. I want to pull up um, an article that I came across. I don't remember which. I just want to, and I'm just going to show you the, uh, uh, see just real quick real quick oh y'all know i'm slow so it's never real quick with me um <laughs> okay no, let me, some, oh, some oh, more yeah. transphobia so let me just hold on, hold on hold on let me real quick <laughs> so we're, we're going to be getting there's going to be a lot of transphobia and trans like antagonistic dog whistles dog alarms god almighty there's more transphobia more dog whistles more dog alarms more dog shit Maybe you're seeing things that aren't really there. Maybe you've gone completely out of your mind and need to come back to Earth. Just so like as we continue, understand that is a huge undercurrent of this video, right? There's also going to be some, some anti-blackness. You are a clever one. There's just no fooling you, is there? She's not a social archaeologist delving into the heart of modern society, seeking universal truths of the human condition. Oh, no, 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 no. But a pickup truck driving redneck, chewing tobacco, playing the banjo, and vomiting forth transphobic dog whistles. Well spotted. Mm. Um, what else we got that's like trigger worthy? Uh, let's see. General, general trigger warning for bigotry <laughs> and shit is probably going to piss you to fuck off. General trigger warning. Hints of reality may follow. General, yeah. general yeah, liberalism. Like, yeah. General liberalism. General li liberalism. <laughs> right. So if you're, this nigga Bellamy, said general you have like a slight echo on your. You have like a slight echo on your mic microphone. So when oh, you God, laugh, I it's it, like. It. <gasps> it sounded like. A I, I kind of love it. <laughs> All right. So, um, back. That, to, that, that's for that's for filming stuff. My bad. I fixed it. <laughs> back to where we at. So, um. This is one of the women mentioned in that uh, in that commentary. Um, this is the, this is the article that she wrote uh, that she wrote for the the Guardian. And so, uh -oh. like, you know, trans women shouldn't call themselves real women. And it's like the thing that makes so. I think Rawlink in particular, and you know, feel free to correct me because I, I not my, not my joint, but Rawlink in particular has really crossed over in a way that there's like no denial at this point we've kind of broken that down and explained that to such a degree mm. where it's not even just a matter of 
gender critical if that was ever really a thing versus she just really hates this this is outright bigotry let's see where the truth lies australian school teachers have been told not to use the words boys and girls and to avoid using the words normal and other as this is heteronormative and therefore wrong naturally they are advised not to use the words mother and father as you did mr signifier you need to stop your hate speech old chap versus like if i asked i don't know one of my aunts about trans women this would be something they would say which is still transphobic but there's an explanation to have here but if you're presenting an argument about people not being transphobic something like this should not be a part of the the question does that make sense mm. it's not i mean for real. if you if you can't get with pronouns in 2023 that's transphobic like we we won that that one y'all got we, <laughs> we won that one right we won right and, and, like, and like the insinuation that like that's something we have to go back and fight for every time is like oh, what man. kind of the annoying or like frustrating thing is right like we i feel like a lot of this type of moderate talk is like well you need to meet people where they're at and i'm like listen like i feel like we are like the standard of where we're at has gone to a point where i can't fight with you on pronouns anymore and i should and it should be uh, uh, uh i don't know if this is wild to say i don't like good social etiquette to while on a person who <laughs> doesn't understand pronouns but like that level you know like if right. nothing at this point we've gone all the other tools if we got to use social shame to do it Right, right. Let's right. talk about that. And also, yes. like, I don't think every single person, like, you know, like just just in the way of like being black and being queer, where it's like I am politicized, like just who I am is politicized. Hmm. And I I don't always these people have all had real difficulty stringing a sentence together, so I've had to edit out a lot of the bullshit. But I've left in enough to amuse you. Cheerio. Wanna have to fight that battle like i don't I, I shouldn't always be put in a position where if someone doesn't get it um i have to to um explain that to them in every single instance like i value my own human autonomy i only have so much time in this world that i'm constantly figuring out do i want to try to kindly explain from this person or do i want to like protect my own mental health right now and just mm -hmm. not engage mm -hmm. with this right now like i don't owe it to the world to have to always be a politicized uh, figure in explaining my humanity to people. And even though I don't owe that to people, I do that all the, all the time anyways. So like, you know, when people are just like, when people talk about how like, with like the left and like having to like ex explain things, it's like, I think that is what we're doing. And also on an individual level, we have to figure out like, do we want to fight this battle in this exact moment? Mm -hmm. Maybe not in this exact moment, but we are constantly fighting this battle because of just who we are uh, for, for a lot of us on the left um, being a lot of people with marginalized statuses are on the left because we're sick and tired of always having to fight this fight. And that's why mm -hmm. we're on the left for a lot of us people. Right. And, and she makes the claim early on, I skipped it, but she, she makes the statement. She wants the left to win. And do she, I, I, I think she does in her, this is a very crucial moment in the video. If you don't even know that Kidology praised the left to the heavens, it is because FD skipped that bit. If you don't watch the video in its entirety, if you just pick and choose the bits that you want to see, then you will not understand what is being said. If you are not even aware that she began the video, by stating great admiration for the left, then you have missed the entire point. But that's what you're best at, isn't it? Picking and choosing what you want to hear and missing the entire point. Keep up the good work. The tendency to convert concrete issues into ideological problems, to invest them with moral color and high emotional charge, is to invite conflicts which can only damage a society. 
So why am I making this video? Well, I would say that there's two reasons. The first being that I believe that historically and presently, the left has substantial potential. I think this is purely in the fact of what the left stands for. The left stands for innovation, for progress, not just technological and economic progress, but importantly, social and moral progress. There is among the left an appreciation that change is inevitable, but that that isn't something which we should be fearful of. It isn't something which we should cover away from, but should rather embrace and confront. It is no coincidence that throughout modern history, intellectuals, philosophers, public intellectuals, profound thinkers and writers have overwhelmingly been left-leaning. It is also no coincidence why, when it comes to the most memorable, the most outstanding art and creativity and expression of oneself, we see overwhelmingly yet again that these individuals are minorities, that they are often individuals who have lived in oppressive situations and societies, that they tend to lean toward more revolutionary thinking or toward more evolutionary thinking, that they are anti-establishment, that they are anti-tradition, that they often forge an identity of their own that goes contrary to the status quo. I think, for instance, historically, this is why the Jewish diaspora has done so exceptionally well in the arts and in many a sphere of modern life, and why, overwhelmingly, the Jewish diaspora is left and liberal leaning. I'm not going to go over what I mean by left, liberal and right here. That will be included in the description box down below for you to read at your own leisure, because I think we all have our understanding, broadly speaking, of this, and so I don't want to keep going over this concept and these concepts. But I would say that based on the traditional and conventional definition of leftist politics and its more liberal tenets, we can pretty much say that progress is something that we largely associate with left or liberal politics. And so that is my first reason for making this video. The left has great potential, as we can see from its historical figures and its place in history. And this leads to the second reason why I'm making this video. And this is a belief that the left is wasting this potential and has kind of turned on itself in a way which is in no way conducive to everything that the left could be and I believe ought to be as a position, as a political and socio-economic position for people to follow, to embrace, to identify with. I do think it's important to preface this video by saying that the left has great potential, that I am rooting for the left, but that I am for the reasons which I'm about to list not a leftist and likely will not be a leftist. But I think as human beings, all we have is faith and hope. And I have faith and hope in humanity. And that includes people on the left. And therefore, I think that this video is more so my trying to advise or more so trying to put forward an alternative form of critique that isn't critique with the intent of putting down and promoting the other side or another side or argument but more so the kind of critique that is important in any political discourse and context. Coming together with our different opinions and perspectives and taking on board the criticism from outsiders, taking on what others are saying in order to improve and better ourselves. So that is where this video is coming from. Her conceptualization of what the left is, which right. is essentially, neo, you know, she speaks on neoliberalism. Um, but like, I, I don't, I don't know. I just, I, it really is, it's confusing. Um, in the, it, in, you know what, you know what it is to me, right? It's, it's the sort of like, to just use a word like liberalism, right? You, you're trying to mm -hmm. get to comfortable. You feel me? Like you ain't trying to go, you ain't trying to push the limit. You're trying to get to like, all right, well, I'm cool. I'm feeling all right, and I don't feel too bad about how how things happen like it's not in my face you know you know what i'm right. saying like i ain't got to look at it i ain't got to think about it so it don't it don't fuck with me like that that's what this is giving yeah yeah i that's mean she she even starts the beginning and says like i am i'm like not a leftist but i have advice for the left like she oh yeah she sees her she's very supportive of the left movement but yeah. she cannot bring herself mm -hmm. to call herself um a leftist because
does, and I guess that ends up being what the what the video is about. And I, I I feel like it's that oh this is is that sort of detachedness like this is y'all problem because yeah, I actually like, don't feel, feel like the current world's actually pretty fine except for these macro problems. Meanwhile, it's, it's y'all micro world, problems. It's, uh, <laughs> it's what Kalama. It's what um. I feel like what what uh damn. MLK's letter letters from Birmingham jail. Exactly, the yes, exactly yes. right. That moderates are the ones that are gonna that are gonna kill us all, right? Because they don't they are the ones who don't want any motion at all. And this is why you lose. If you can't even get along with moderates from your own side, what chance have you got of shaping the broader community? In one of the uh, the 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 boy um John not John Green is fucked up. I'm about to no, it is John Green. He was when he was in a break bread that I thought was a really useful statement for like moderates and normies to hear is he was like, when, when he hears other white people talk about racism, they're talking about fixing racism. And he tells them, and, and, and he says, they say it, it to speak to kind of what Bellamy was just saying. It's not that they really want to address racism. They just want to get to a point where they don't have to think about it anymore where it doesn't bother them anymore, where they don't have to worry about it. And so I think for a lot of liberals, the trans, trans people are a thing they would rather just not think about or bother with. Like it's too hard for them to engage with the deconstruction of gender and sex and identity that is kind of incumbent with transness and which means they have to challenge so many other things in their, in their personal day to day to be just it's easier to just be like you know what we're gonna just act, we're just y'all stick there just you go over there we don't have to worry about y'all when like whatever laws come out against y'all it is what it is and we're gonna get this i don't know free health care and electric cars and shit um mm -hmm. and like i think that's i think that's what she's on i think that's what a lot of moderates are on yeah so, and i I don't, I don't even know if she realizes that she own that because she do this thing where yeah, she kind of like give everybody the time of day, you know, you know what I mean? And I feel like it just kind of ends up in that same sort of space, even if, if that's not the motivation to get there necessarily. You know, you, you yeah, do this thing think... where you're like, all right, I got to listen to all sides. Listening to all sides. What a horrendous idea. You should definitely only listen to one side of each argument, preferably the deranged side. What if somebody listened to just one side? And it was the side of the far right. Wouldn't it make sense to listen to both sides and take what works from both sides? Okay. Um, I think she would just, she like has said in videos that she's apolitical. And to me, like her views sound moderate, but just out of like res respect of like what she would describe, like maybe just saying like, I feel like she has moderate views rather than like saying she is one since she wouldn't describe herself as that, I don't think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, hmm. but but also to be moderate right now in the Western world is to be right wing. You know what I'm exactly. saying? Exactly. Exactly. Like the... To be moderate is to be right wing. This is why people are fleeing from the left. Highly intelligent people will listen to both sides and hear them out. Take what works from one side and what works from the other side. Listening to only one side is something that only a fool does. And our entire system of justice is based on hearing both sides in order to find the truth. To, to be moderate, to be apolitical in the, in the Western world right now, when, you know, there, there's an, there's an like underlying and bubbling to the surface trans genocide. Trans genocide? When the Nazis murdered six million Jews, that was a genocide. When the Ottoman Empire murdered one million Armenians, that was a genocide. The numbers don't bear out your claims of a trans genocide. Wild exaggerations don't help trans people, they harm them. When you make claims of a genocide that are not backed up by evidence, you cheapen and demean those who suffered real genocides. This is why so many people refer to you as the loony left. Relentlessly making false statements, wild exaggerations, and presenting them as truth. There are 
there's you know I, I can name all the things right i'm not yeah, gonna go it, that that's that that's all another thing that that i've seen like a lot of in in this video my bad i didn't mean to cut you yeah. off no no that's it all the things y'all know what they are y'all no. know all the, the issues we tend to talk about and care about those things yeah. are in dire straits this isn't like but you know, i just i want I, I, I want to make sure that i'm saying though because I don't, I don't know if she even realizes it I feel the, like she the, gives a good but the way that, that the society is built favors the right wing. Most people are going to agree with some right wing talking points across the board because you've been inculcated with those ideas from 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 jump. Off rip, you had this nonsense in your head. So most people are going to agree with some form of white right wing whatever because that's just how it is. That that's that's what happens when you're trying to revolutionize society or change some shit. You're pushing against a massive status quo, and that's the situation we're in right now. So yeah, there's going to be more people, generally speaking, in the middle slash to the right because we're in a middle slash to the right ass society. Like that's just the fact of fucking situation. Right. I mean, I think I think she mentions. Um, also, sorry, someone said I'm like out of sync, but I don't know how to fix it. With, yeah, like, my it audio. is what it is. I'll um. W, but uh, uh yeah um i think she's like mentioned that like the the left has like this massive battle this uphill battle and she like commends people on the left for uh working that hard um but at the same time i think there's this this thing that she's trying to bring up about how she believes that the left like fails at being inclusive where the right like doesn't have like these strict <laughs> like hey you need to, to do this to be on the right the right doesn't have that as much as much as the left does like the left is like well we're not gonna tolerate transphobia we're not gonna tolerate tolerate racism mm -hmm, we're not mm -hmm. gonna yeah all all these things and for some reason like i think i think the her whole video is saying like well that's fundamentally a problem and i think for me like it's not it's actually not a problem i'm just no like, i don't want you over here nigga. i don't like, want you over here having a good mean? time i don't think she thinks as much of a problem as i think what's maybe not more worrisome but more I don't know, maybe relatable that she thinks is not know. realistic, right? right? Like she yeah, thinks like you like, have to like you have to assume that not ever like there's no way we all could get on the same page about some sort of fundamental like human decency or perspective on people, and so you must be aware. And I guess to what Bellamy was saying before, right? This idea like when you have to hold space for all the ideas, even holding space for for things on the fringes or things that are so antithetical to like more progressive ideas like take space up in your brain like it, it it uh it it makes it so you have to move a little bit more to that which so, you don't even like oh uh, let's get to that section um so we can at least have her words to kind of respond to directly so i think this is all like various this is all various just from a religious perspective and individuals who are atheists and writing from an atheistic perspective and they all come together to write exceptional pieces and articles and essays. I would highly recommend subscribing to and reading Unheard. There we go. Okay. The first I would say is political dogma. The left has started off with good intentions, very good intentions. It's particularly when it comes to representing and speaking for and giving a platform to minority issues. However, the left has largely left these good intentions in the dust in pursuit of more accessible ends, as well as more accessible causes, namely identity politics. For instance, representing minority issues such as that that of trans individuals is an exceptional and important thing. However, doing that at the expense of letting a woman write about gender causes issues, understandably. All right, I don't want to, we're not going to jump on every trans, uh, transphobic dog whistle. I just want to put that out there. Ah, yes. Letting a woman write about gender issues from a woman's point of view. That would be transphobic, wouldn't it? Surely we must prevent that from happening. The words mother and father are banned in many public hospitals. Many people using the words ladies and gentlemen in public roles are accused of bullying and threatened with the loss of their jobs. Swedish preschools have banned children from using the words boy and girl, him and her, he and she for 10 years. I think you will find that almost every single culture in human history has heard words for him and her, he and she, boy and girl, man and woman. These words are not prejudiced against trans people. 
If you think they are, your head is stuck so far up your ass you are turned inside out. I recommend you scour YouTube for videos where people speak to African tribes and ask them about your modern left-wing gender nonsense. They tell African tribes words like boy and girl, man and woman have been banned by people like you. You don't need to go to YouTube because you can hear their laughter all the way from Africa. So if you th if you're thinking that we're going to, we're letting something slide, we'll come back here because this is an undercurrent of the whole video. It's a lot. But we're, it's a lot. But we're not gonna uh, jump on each one of them. I do want to talk about um, her her statement about identity politics, which I agree with, and I and I agree with that from the perspective of and and one well you know what no let me let me let her finish because it's a I, 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 I'm going to jump into other things she says that she hasn't said yet. And is something that I would say is ultimately an example of leaving good intentions in the dust in pursuit of a far more accessible and palatable perspective. And in this, I think, regrettably, the left has very little to say, specifically the online left, has very little to say in the way of macro issues, contrary to micro issues. The left has a lot to say about micro issues. And I would say that trans issues are in my northern Europe. Uh, I'm sorry. That was the one of the things reason, that I would say. Like in that the <laughs> left is losing people or northern oh, europe well this, this, where am i at the oh, second no, reason i would here. say okay. that oh. the left is losing people or the re reason why people are skeptical of the left is the modern left likes to revise history according to the postmodern staple of there being no grand narratives and no universal truths every single failing of modern society can be explained by our loss of education when the baby boomers came along they decided that studying history didn't matter. Their civilization was the beginning of history. They were going to build a utopian civilization full of peace and love, holding hands and singing Kumbaya. So they decided that studying history didn't matter. Now, the modern world has almost no knowledge of our history, almost no knowledge of where we came from, almost no knowledge of the vast world beyond our social media. Almost no awareness of the almighty universe that is out there waiting for us. The modern world is seriously sick because people are looking inward rather than looking outward. We must live lives of daring adventure, take incredible risks and dream impossible dreams, not compete with people on social media. That way leads to mental illness and we all know it. Let us get outdoors, where we have been for the entirety of human history. Human beings have been around for 12 million years, and in all that time, we have lived outdoors, slept under the stars, and dreamed impossible dreams. I have spent my life dreaming impossible dreams, attempting things that other people are convinced are impossible. Almost everything I have ever done in my entire life is something that other people have said, you can't do that, you won't succeed. Just watch me. Many women aged in their 60s have walked across deserts. Many people have walked from North Africa to South Africa, from Western Africa to Eastern Africa. This chap hopes to cross the Atlantic Ocean in a boat that is three feet and three inches long. This chap found a sailing dinghy lying abandoned in a field. He painted it and sailed it from England all the way to Romania, a distance of more than 4,000 kilometers, and it's barely longer than he is. The smallest boat to ever circumnavigate the earth was less than 12 feet long. It was this boat, and it was sailed by an Australian man named Serge Tester. This Frenchman is sailing across oceans in a boat he built himself because he said he couldn't afford to buy a boat. And I'm recording this in a boat that I bought for $500, half sunk. Two boats of this model have sailed right around the world and I have grand plans for this one. I myself intend to sail beyond the orbit of Saturn and visit the outer planets in my yacht. And the left's adoption of this postmodern state has led it into a lot of contradictions and therefore into a lot of infighting. This infighting distracts from those macro issues, from those macro concerns 
and conversations and results in a lot of infighting that mainly in the no, but where around, is where is the thing issues, which gets into or anything race. Oh, oh, like oh that's, um, that's, no, no, not that. Not the transracial stuff. Pause, get pause, get pause, get pause. Oh, you, got, yeah, you got 18 things get, Go ahead. I'm sorry, when she get... <laughs> <laughs> I got you, I got you. I'm here to do this real time now. I ain't gonna yell at you in the chat no more. I can tell you. <laughs> that's so funny. When she talks about the lack of diversity on the left oh, versus the right. What was that? that? But that's, that's, that's bullshit. I'm, I know, I, but right. I want to. I, no, I, I, I need. I need to chill. I need to I chill because I don't need. To, I don't need to get. I don't need to get irritated with her. I'm trying to take her for who she is. Uh, I think it's around like minute thirty-four. It's no, it's not that far in, is it? Where she starts talking about like it has a stricter criteria, and then like the right had the yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know where it is. Uh, but she put that like whole chart up there. I remember. Yeah. Up there. Taking very comfortable in its own self righteous yeah, Hold up. And the small percentage of trans you, you stop. I'll do it, and I'll give you time. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Can My we quickly just talk about the right. macro issue thing? Because I feel I, I know you skipped through it a little bit, but right. she talked about she gave, you know, she said the thing about um what she felt was what was micro issues, but her only example for a macro issue was the economy. Nothing else. Because but, like, she just, knows if she says anything else, it's actually all the micro issues that she's saying that we talk too much about, right. in my opinion. Right. It, we have a whole we, it's a whole subset of the left that pisses me to fuck off because all they talk about is class at the expense of everything else what do you mean and then and then to take i take identity and turn it into like a micro issue for me is nonsense too no yeah. not nonsense it is is a mistake too because what do you mean we suffer the issues we suffer as an identity because of the various structures of society this isn't a micro issue right. it is illuminating a larger problem that's part of fucking identity politics is that's part of what intersectionality is supposed to do you look at the intersections that different people have the different groups have and it gives you a more full picture of society so you can actually understand what the hell is happening that's what this is these aren't micro issues these are just issues trans issues are not micro issues they're issues bodily autonomy is an everybody issue that is not a me issue that is an all of you issue yeah and, and to 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 address a normie perspective right so i might hear somebody say i care about the economy and i might break it down and say so wh why do you care about the economy well because people you know can't take care of themselves and don't have jobs well what population of people fits into that description you just gave most most likely they would say black people <laughs> <laughs> and so it's like okay so why are black people overrepresented in the description you just gave you would have to eventually get to racism you know what i'm saying that there's, like, there's a lot of like just there's, there's a lot of surface level stuff there's no like why no, no no asking why no asking how it's a lot of just like looking at the way things are right like for instance she gives a she gives we might get there but she gives an example later where she goes through like oh well, there's a whole bunch of how i left the left videos on youtube but there's no mm -hmm. how i let why i left the right videos on youtube there's only one why do you think that is that this it's there right. for a reason that this isn't accidental. This isn't just the normal permutation of society, so to speak. This that shit is there for a specific reason. It's because that shit's propaganda. That's why the fuck's that shit's there. And it's because YouTube boosts propaganda. Right. That's why you see so many of those videos versus you see in hours. You just there's, there, there's no like structural slash power analysis here. There's just this like it's, surface it's, level. It's really it's really like her resist or I'll, I'll no put a resistance. link in the private chat for you cheap feek so you can get to the um the time stamp. it's okay, really right. like the resistance to what to attribute things to any sort of system or like systemic yeah inequity right to like and i feel like it comes from and i feel like like technology would have to know this right she seems very learned so it's more like a, a choice and to she's say okay, she's not silly right there's two and to be fair i guess what's frustrating to me about it right thinking about it from a more normie perspective from maybe more like my parents or like my you know my friends that aren't aren't as much into to, uh, leftist politics, right? There are there are two equally way, two equal ways to see the world. Do I look at it as uh, systemic problems are plaguing me and that's why my life sucks, or do I look for a system that offers me a bunch of pragmatic solutions, or at least says it's or at least says it's my fault, so that or that it's like people's fault. Um, oh, therefore, God. that like I can I feel like I have some more semblance of control over the situation, and that's kind of what both break my breaks my heart and leaves me confounded about how do you argue that because 
I mean, sure, you could not trust people, but you're kind of not better off for that. And I think that's what what moderates and and progressives kind of fundamentally disagree upon in a lot of ways. Like we like they like freedom of speech, but they don't. Um, only when only when the speech reifies the status quo. Exactly. Because if you kneel at a football game. If you can't even get along with moderates from your own side, then it's little wonder that people are fleeing the left in droves. If you kneel at a football game, they want you to lose everything. You know they, what I'm saying? And then they'll take they'll everything you from you, but if you still if you still if you still welfare money, you good, right? If you're right. still in welfare still, money, it's all right. It's all right. You know what I'm saying? Fuck you mean. <laughs> Hold on. So we're at the part, and then we'll, we'll jump back around because there's so many things. This is one. That, I think this might have been. No, it's too late in the video. So I, I guess I'd already blew my mind earlier. But this was a big one for me. I wanted to jump on. It's very accepting of a diverse membership, and this the is right. The right is very accepting of a diverse membership. There we go. So we are. Yeah. So if, if I was right, okay. Again, <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. My bad. My bad. Call my you. <laughs> Okay. My bad. Uh, no, pause because no, I, I wanted to make sure that that I, that I hit on this too because I remember I wrote I wrote I put it in the notes and it's my first it was my first note because it, it drove me nuts. The right already filters by ideology that already happens. This is not right. like oh they let every they already filter by ideology. They have tools. They have people that they use as tools, but they're already filtered by ideology. If you go go uh what, what, go listen. Let, um, let, them, let them see this part because I, I want them to connect your words all right, all right, go ahead, go ahead, go to ahead, this go ahead. part because it's a, yeah, it's perfect. When we look at the political spectrum and we look at that segment, which is designated to the right from the center right to the ultra orthodox right, there is a lot going on and there is a lot of space for a lot of different identities. You can be conservative in values without being religious. You can be a conservative atheist. You can can be a conservative insofar as how you organize your finances and your personal life whilst being socially quite liberal. You can celebrate Christmas with your family, believe in the traditional family unit, be patriotic, whilst also being completely anti-establishment. There are vigilantes, there are libertarians, there is a whole, a whole situation going on there. And it is truly diverse and fascinating just from a political and theoretical perspective. But it also means that there's a lot of space for a lot of ideas. Entities. And I think because the right and conservative thinking is very much about the family and tradition and also every individual for themselves, I think it works weirdly. And the right is a very mixed bag of identities, of individuals who are working class to the ultra rich. And this is truly exceptional and very interesting to see, especially in our day and age. And I think adding on to this, another reason why the right is at an advantage relative to the left today i would say is because of populism all right so, so that was a lot yeah yeah the right <laughs> is accepting of all these identities <laughs> unless you're queer or black or trans or, or, all these or, things. or like, <laughs> you're so right madame Moiselle. there are absolutely no black people queer people trans people on the right wing <laughs> well hold on, hold on i'm gonna i'm gonna so you can actually be all those things on the right as long as you mm -hmm. agree that those things are inherently bad and you're sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Signifier is correct here. There are certainly a huge number of absolute nutters on the right. And unfortunately, it is the nutters who are the loudest voices, just as the nutters are the loudest voices on the left. I am convinced there must be a huge number of moderate left-wing people, but a lot of them are afraid to speak because they will be screeched at and sacked from their jobs by the social justice warriors. Almost every right-wing media figure has either been bought by big corporations or is completely deranged or is just pure evil. And there are certainly people on the far right that are absolutely vile. And there is certainly a portion of the right-wing Things exactly as FD says. Yeah, right. For being right. That's what mm -hmm. that's what I'm saying. It's already <laughs> filtered by it is already filtered by ideology. Two things, two things, and, and they both bangers. I know they banger because I fucking thought about it. Number one, <laughs> talk that shit. That one's actually as funny as all hell. 
So that's a win to you. Most people don't understand fascists. Most people don't get fascists. Straight up, that's it. Like, and that's not even to be mean to nobody. That's not to say that you that you silly that you this to understand fascists. You have to study fascists. You are a clever one. There's just no fooling you, is there? You really have got things back to front, haven't you? You talk about fascism, 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 non-stop. I challenge people to count the number of times the word fascist or fascism is used in this video. And you relentlessly mischaracterize normal, well-balanced, nuanced conversation as fascism. This this ain't this ain't like a like like you could just look at it and see that the, the like like most people see a fascist and they see something's wrong, but to understand like fascism, you have to actually study that shit. You claim to be fighting fascism by engaging in fascism yourself, and your lack of self awareness ensures you are unaware of the irony. Freedom of speech has always been considered our dearest Western value. Many, many, many civilizations do not allow free speech, and it took us many thousands of years to achieve it. In Marcus Aurelius's meditations, in the very opening sentences, he says, to suffer free speech in another. He means, we must allow free speech, but free speech will always hurt us. We will always hear things we do not agree with, but we must support free speech. Preventing free speech is fascism, which is what you are doing. And good for, good for, good for everybody in the chat right now. You got somebody in the motherfucker that do that. <laughs> Me. <laughs> they communicate in ways that makes it seem like they're very welcome and they do this shit on purpose. This isn't an accident. They look like they're diverse because what they do is they pluck out for lack of a better term, they pluck out the pick me's, right? Mm -hmm. And they put the pick me's up there. So they say, oh, look, they, they must have a bunch of black, black people because they got Herschel Walker running. Herschel Walker right. almost almost ran, almost won in Georgia. They must right. got ton of, they must got a ton of black people. No, they don't. They ain't got no damn black people for the most part. The people that was voting for Herschel Walker were white people. Straight up. Right. That's just how that is. Like I don't so, know how that that's it. Like that's the end of that conversation, right? This sneaky new way of promoting white supremacy. By elevating black people into positions of power is cunning beyond belief. The mind boggles FD. And then number number two, hold up, let me see. I got it in here. I got it in here. Oh, oh no, it's bad. No, no, because that, that was the first one. First one was most people don't understand fascists. Damn, damn. Hold up, I had it too. See this look, look at this ADD. Y'all go ahead. So I wanna like this. I have so much heat for this section. <laughs> I got so I got so much heat. I got, I got so, so much heat. smoke for this for this particular point because it was of all the points that she made that I disagree with. Well, no, let me not not because there's several of them, but this one to me was the most um like it asinine. It it was the most un it, it, uh, like absent of like like median level knowledge of the right and the left uh at at a, at a certain point and, and the first thing i'll do is it proves and it's just, it accidentally proves her point because the reason why she thinks the way she does in this section is because the online left is so fucking white white as fuck it's, it's... the offline left is as white as fuck too i've only ever been called a racist by white people, usually people in a relationship with another white person, having white children and white friends. Meanwhile, I've been in interracial relationships almost the entirety of my adult life and have several different races in my family. I'm the only white person in my family. Everyone else is a person of color. The left has a huge number of white people in it married to other white people, with white children, all white friends, and all white social circle. And they love to call those of us in interracial families racists. The irony is lost on these people. White as fuck. And if you are, if you see the online left, 
and you see what the online left spends most of its time doing and and who they tend to uh target and criticize and spend time dunking on every if you only go by that and nothing else then everything she's saying makes some sense right, right. but go ahead Lua. Lua had, Lua had heat for this go ahead Lua. go ahead Lua. go ahead. I, got, I got more oh. i jump back in we can tag in and out like wrestles, wrestles <laughs> i i'm just actually listening I, I was gonna say something in the video but i forgot it was so but it's like yeah oh so talk in. about like it not being diverse because you, you said something earlier where you were saying like you, you wanted to bring up that you knew people that were doing actual work yeah sorry like not <laughs> online that's cool it's cool yeah well i talked i can talk a bit about that and, i'm like and, having and, a hard time connecting that to this mm -hmm. but uh, feel free to help me but yeah there's yeah, just cool. like so many people who are doing like so much work who are doing mutual aid who are creating all these like networks to help people and those are people who are like leftist and it's just like i know so many people who are poor and grew up poor who because they grew up poor they're very left leading so it's just like this whole idea of like the left doesn't like cater to to poor people uh just seems out of touch to me yeah. like i i don't i don't like know who production. you're talking about the left has boundless compassion for people on the other side of the world who are suffering and for somebody of my background living in extreme poverty and starvation right under their noses they have nothing but utter contempt every item of clothing that i ever owned growing up was handed down one of my school shirts was so large i could have fitted in it twice many of the school pants i had to wear were so tight that if i sat down the buttons would fly off and the zippers would break so i had to undo the zippers and the buttons as i sat down people would mock and ridicule my old torn and dirty clothing the school shoes i wore often had holes in them and i would tear pages out of my exercise books and fold them into squares and put them in the bottom of my shoes and you could walk maybe 10 paces before the pieces of paper in the soles of your shoes would be soaked and you would have to replace them again naturally every rainy day my socks became completely soaked sometimes my shoes would split open at the front so they would have a big smiley crocodile mouth so i would get some sticky tape or some string and tie it around my shoes to keep them closed and people ridiculed and mocked and sneered and jeered my school teachers would stand me up in class and ridicule my enormous shirt and my torn clothing one of the students noticed that there was a green ink stain on the pocket of one of my shirts and he told everybody that this had been his shirt and they gave it to the charity shop and this was a source of great amusement to them. The idea that my clothing was secondhand, because that was incomprehensible to these spoiled kids who I had to go to school with. I never wanted anybody to know that I was taking the sandwiches from the rubbish bin, the sneers, the jeers, and the mockery, not just from the students, but from the shit for brains teachers, would have reached the planet Pluto. It feels like a projection. I, I just genuinely don't know who you're talking about because uh yeah that just has not been my she's talking about no shade contrapoints she's mm. talking about jenny nicholson no shade yeah yeah she's talking about mm -hmm, um mm -hmm. the big bread tube figures and the big bread tube accounts and the image of the online left which and i, I talk about this in my video and i got love for all those people i named right but i talk about the fact that they didn't choose to be the face of the online left t1j mentioned that one of his videos a while back mm -hmm. um the the algorithm chose them um the algorithm understood that there was something to be gleaned from giving a platform to these talented attractive white safe left-leaning people and the community that what that was formed under and around them reflects a lot of the points that she just made it it meant she is mm -hmm. right about that from that very specific and, and very uninformed context. Meanwhile, here I am, a cis hetero man. Did you just refer to yourself as a man, FD? Because JK Rowling was first banned because she wished to refer to herself as a woman. People just like yourself wish to ban the word woman and suggested using the words people who bleed.
Let me just repeat that. They wish to ban the word woman and replace it with the phrase people who lead. That is what her very first tweet railed against. She wished to call herself a woman, and that was considered hate speech and transphobia. You just referred to yourself as a man. You need to stop the hate speech and transphobia, FD. With a traditional family that just celebrated the fuck out of Christmas. You know what I'm saying? Like she's well, saying let, shit. Let me cut in real quick, FD, and say like, not only is, I guess, like she's right from the online left looking as like pale as it does, but on the other side to what <laughs> Bellamy was saying, right? The How fascism works and I'm, ca I'm not calling every right wing YouTube influencer a fascist because that's dangerous for my health but it's the fact that the the clip that she showed the, the the edit that she showed there are a lot more unicorns in the right wing uh eco ecosphere right there right. are a lot more oh Indian black like not your typical what you expect because that's what they're trying to market just right. like uh um, Melanie said, like, white people are the people that w voted for Herschel Walker, even though he was black, because that's the point. That's the hmm. that's the tool. That's literally right? the point. That's why Clarence Thomas is on the Supreme Court. Right. The nigga would not like, be there we're, if he was black. We're up against two opposing force, both that bread tube or whatever you want to call it, like, this leftist, progressive, smart, yet very high quality, entertaining media is overwhelmingly white. But then on the on, in the negative timeline, on the opposite side of the spectrum, we also have their version of high quality entertaining content being provided for a lot of these people who are middle of the road i feel like um like a different diverse face that that kind of assuage either assuages their white guilt or unknowingly allows a person of color to be like, like oh well you know maybe you know maybe i do agree with um with the liberalism I and maybe i am look. the problem mm. those sneaky bastards on the right wing Putting black people into positions of power in order to promote white supremacy? You said yourself, white people voted for Herschel Walker, a black man. And they promoted a black man to the Supreme Court. In the old days, they practiced white supremacy by putting white people in positions of power. Now, they're putting black people in positions of power. Very, very sneaky and insidious. Sometimes I think the world's gone mad. So I, 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 got my, I got my second banger. I remember my okay, second banger. Yeah. I'm, I'm sagging it at this. All right, I bet, 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 bet. So the, the nonsense about the left is constantly infighting. Everybody constantly infighting. That's that's bullshit. Like that's just that's just people disagreeing about shit. And that's true whether you're on the left or on the right. And I know that people don't understand. Like if you if you're really gonna understand the right wing, you gotta pay a lot of attention and you gotta know where to look to find these motherfuckers. And I'm not gonna tell nobody that because don't nobody don't everybody need to know. But when you listen, if you if you go to like um Go to Knowledge Fight, right? Knowledge Fight is a podcast, and they cover Alex Jones. But they did a, they did a couple of episodes on somebody named Nick Fuentes. Most of the people in the chat probably know who Nick, Nick Fuentes is. Nick Fuentes is a good, good example of, of the same sort of issues we have on the left. Not the same, same exact thing, but like this like quote-unquote infighting thing, right? Mm -hmm. He will attack and cannibalize the audience of another right-winger to grow his platform. Because that's the point. Mm. He's part of a pipeline. Mm. There's infighting because there's already disagreement. They will. They there. There is some truth to the idea that right wingers manage to 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 unite behind certain shit and get shit done. In that regard, there is some truth to that. But a lot of that has to do also with structural problems of society, making it easier for them to agree with one another. On the left, you're in a project where you're trying to build a new society. The the disagreements you have are about literally the next step you're supposed to take. They're going to be fervent. They're going to be frequent. They have to be. That's not a bug. That's a feature. That's how the shit works. You're figuring out what you're doing. So you argue it out. So then you figure out what to do next. That's how it is. That's not that's not a bad thing. That's just a thing. I feel like the biggest dog whistle is the idea that like people when people ever say, when people say that boys or whoever this population is more naturally attuned towards uh, traditional or conservative values, and it completely ignores the idea that like they're on argument like they've been they've been refining that argument for centuries, multiple <laughs> centuries, and right. the whole point of our movement, 
right? You know, like, of course, like, e even if it was a shit argument, like, you've been hearing the same shit argument for so long that, like, it is not an argument anymore. And yeah, we do have, which is that's the annoying part with agreeing with the lazy politics part of Kidology's point, right? Which is like, I do feel like it's worth reminding people that we are having to do the hard job of making the arguments right now for people to not go um, the hegemonic route. Right. That we have, that we do have to, we do have to sort of redefine common sense solutions and make them feel common sense to people who feel like individualism and liberalism is the common sense thing. Right. Which, which is that, that's why Kidology is so compelling, right? Because it, or Jordan Peterson, even all the way down to like Hosma. Um, and yeah, I take that critique that we are working on, and that should be our priority to make those common sense answers for people and, or, or just, think through them for them, think through them with them. The thing that like really alarmed me about this section is just the lack of just how this is just counterfactual. Right. If you look at like just the just the identity of if you if you if you draw the line at leftists, it, just look at the voting patterns of America. <laughs> you clearly see that the Republicans are predominantly white by a wide margin, mm, mm. and that the, all the diversity, racially, economically, and gender wise, is on the left. The left, in this case, being Democrats, of course. Um, and so like, that was just flabbergasting to me that that was something that, that did not click in her head to say, Ooh, I don't know if this one holds up under scrutiny. Right. Like when you look at uh, just, just the black community alone is <laughs> not, 50, and maybe it's 50, 50, maybe it's different in the UK, which makes that make more sense. I, I'll, mm. I'll hold that for anybody in the UK that can speak to it um, more clearly. I, I, but definitely in, in America, that is completely untrue. Um, so, but that's not the, the, so I don't know, where do we want to go next? That I wanted to get to that one. Um, we got oh, we got a couple oh. of bangers to, to touch on here. Um, I got nothing but bangers in these notes, so you let me know. Right, right. Honestly. Um, I can't we already the transracial stuff. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. So where am I at? Oh, Got that's right here. That. Yeah, the yeah, the transracial. Uh, no, that's the wrong thing. There we go. Okay, that's what we needed, little Bill. I wanted him to talk about these fallacies. Little, 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 little Bill in the chat. Pop off in the chat, little Bill. We see you. Yeah, right. yeah. Pop off in the chat, little Bill. Here we go. I'm gonna give it. Yeah, I'm starting. My individuals in the comment section of this article labeled him as transphobic, rather than engaging with the science or with experts. The entire Higher field, which is really and truly the foundation of modern thinking, is dismissed. This, in my opinion, is simply the easy way out. I've also noticed re recently that with the discourse on transracialism and or relative to transgenderism, there is no expertise or knowledge on the left about how the two differ. Yet, on the other hand, complete obedience to that distinction is expected. And if one does not completely agree or is not completely obedient to that position, one is automatically labeled some kind of phobia or exiled. Complete obedience and compliance is expected to the left's perspective on social issues and identities. And there it is. Complete obedience is required. You may not think for yourself. You may not have your own views. You may not have your own opinion. You will believe what you are told to believe. The textbook definition of fascism. These are the people calling us transphobes, racist, bigots, and every other bullshit word under the sun. These people are pushing totalitarian beliefs. It's not a debate. You suppress that shit. Pure fascism. And that is why we fight back against them. So I want to again reiterate two things for anybody that just joined. 
the, the transphobic dog whistles we're gonna talk about again maybe in a second and we talked about it at the beginning they permeate the whole video and we can't keep talking about it not everything that you disagree with is a dog whistle maybe your head is stuck so far up your own ass that every time you breathe you hear a high-pitched whistling sound which nobody else can hear like a dog whistle you described yourself as a man and as a father, you use the words man and father. That is hate speech, according to many people on the left who share your views. The words mother and father are being banned in many places across the world, such as the maternity wards in hospitals. The word mother is banned and the word birthing parent is used. So when you describe yourself as a father, you used hate speech. When you described yourself as a man, you used hate speech. You committed two instances of hate speech in describing yourself as a man and a father. Now, I don't know if you're self-aware enough to understand what I've just said. It's very apparent that you spend 90% of your life with your head stuck up your own ass. You and your acolytes have overplayed your hand and if you back off a little bit and stop calling absolutely everything a dog whistle or hate speech you will achieve a great deal more you do not speak to the mainstream the mainstream sees you as the deranged radical left i really hope you develop enough self-awareness to realize you need to back off and you will achieve more. Um, and then, oh shit, there was another thing that I can't remember. So I'm just let her finish. I'm just Without her finish. question. Being versus becoming has always been a hot topic in philosophy. Are you born a woman or do you become a woman? Simone de Beauvoir asked, and she said, you become one. Gender is a performance. Uh, you actually perform it every day. And Sarah's way so the first statement is, well, I'm going to let y'all can read shit. I ain't got to repeat it. One becomes, <laughs> one becomes black. It's a social construct, a performance. Now there's a big problem there. You can't compare the two. That would be very dishonest. We think that's wrong. The rules of gender and race are always changing. And given this, the question that really matters isn't whether individuals. So I, I just want to start with this, with this caption bother me immediately because she used she said that the by the article is biased because it was made by two leftist academics if she had just said that the argument was poor and contradictory i wouldn't have had an issue there but she loads her statement with mm. that preconceived mm. like preordained um value proposition that the article is biased because it's written by two leftist academics so first mm. off the vast majority of academics in any social sciences are leftists like this is Put that out there, right? I mean, every, so everything like, is biased. Anything, everything is biased. There's nothing that's not biased. It's all it's biased. Telling every single thing use. is biased. You can't separate it from humanity. You can't right. separate it from humans. Therefore, there's a person that wrote the thing, and the person has a bias. Every single person on 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 the face of this fucking planet who has the ability to think has an ideology. That's it. Right. So that so there's that. But to use that, and so maybe you don't believe that, right? I would disagree with you. But if you don't believe that. I can accept that to be your truth by disagreeing with the article based on its origins and then not breaking down the actual thing. There's a lot of loadedness in that, but I want to, I want to let her continue. It's like Diallo and Krug are in fact black given our present rules of racial classification, but whether they should be, should be accepts the fact that what gender and race mean change with time. On the other hand, figuring out what a woman really is or uh, who really is black leads us to argue in a essentialist framework. Basically, a woman is someone with a uterus and a black person is someone with, I don't know, black skin. Stepping out of that essentialist framework allows us to take into account all the elements, cultural, social, economic, that can help us understand 
who should be considered as a woman and who should be considered as black. In the case of blackness, inequality accumulates intergenerationally in the US. Sociologists point at weathering, inheritance gaps between black and white households as proof of that. Now, obviously, gender is not a historical women, queer people. As I like how she doesn't address that really important point she made about the literal, uh, like, biological cost of being black that you pass on to your children like yeah, that's I was, not i was just thinking about this shit today because I was, I was thinking about it trying to talk about the experience of racism if you, if you black you experience racism before you could think when you were a fucking embryo you were experiencing racism because your parent was experiencing racism right. because your parent was taking all of that shit that was happening to them and that doesn't not affect you it's why infant mortality rates are higher it's why 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 death rates are higher when you're giving birth and you're black in the hospital it is absolutely true that by every single metric, black people are terribly disadvantaged. And there is absolutely no doubt that this is directly due to the vile and utterly despicable transatlantic slave trade. This time of reckoning that we see when black injustices are at the forefront of news right across the world was always going to come. And the reason that people of color are so disadvantaged today is due to the cowardice of successive governments across the Western world and their refusal to address very clear and criminal inequalities and their refusal to take measures decades ago that would have remedied the situation. If one side of government said, we're going to try and recompense black people for the crimes committed against them, the other side would win. But the whole point of Kidology's video, and the whole point of those of us who criticize the left, and let me be clear, the right wing offers very little in way of solutions other than pull yourself up by the bootstraps. But we criticize the left because they go overboard. Black Lives Matter ran riot throughout black suburbs, vandalizing and destroying huge numbers of black owned businesses. Furthermore, a huge number of those doing the vandalizing were middle class white people. Then they went back to their comfortable homes feeling that they had struck their blow against this unequal society and the owners and employees of the black owned businesses were left with vandalized and destroyed property. Yet when we criticized the actions of Black Lives Matter, of course we were described as white supremacists and Nazis. There is a balance to be struck in all things. Kidology very clearly praises the left for their extraordinary achievements in a wide range of fields. Yet the tenor of her criticism is that in many ways you have gone too far. You are the radical left and by putting all white people and all black people into groups rather than grouping them economically, which would be much, much, much more sensible. You alienate a lot more people than you inspire. The people who criticize you are not racists and white supremacists. They just know that you live in a bubble. That's why you, Alistair, you, you. loads are different. Like, mm -hmm. sorry. Right. No, you good, you good. No, I don't understand what she means by this essentialism versus like she's combating essentialism with essentialism because by talking about the by talking about the biological cost of what it's like to like be a different race rather than what it's like to be a different gender and how even the quote that she pulls out, it's like it's really like, does this person deserve to be referred to as this race rather than this gender? adds nuance that makes it less essentialist, right? It's about looking at the different degrees by which both of these are, are social constructs and she gets that part, right? That's mm. the false equivalence. But the, the way that we stratify them or the way that we talk through race versus the way we talk through gender society is different and has to be different, right? Because because they're different things. They're, they're different, different things, Telemark. Tay, you gonna say they're different shit? <laughs> yeah. You're saying gender, you're saying gender and race are different? No, still, Who would have thought, you know? Oh, mm. I but mean, like, but if, also, but if you only accept that there are two equal things, you're, you know, you end up with this argument. I think there's also something to be said for like what, uh, like what is gender equality and what is racial equality. Mm. I think when you're talking about um, when people are trans, for example, like I feel like 
um, what's really fascinating to me about like when you talk about trans issues, like it fundamentally challenges how we think of gender. Um, and I think I think there's like almost no way no way to get around it. Like to me, like studying feminism and studying um, like studying gender theory went hand in hand. And mm -hmm. uh, essentially, like when it comes to like um, understanding like what it means to be a man, what it means to be a woman, and how those things are social constructs, and how we can literally just mm -hmm. change change those ideas to be more inclusive of people, to be more liberating, self-expressive. We can literally just do that. And other cultures have done that um, in the past constantly and still do. Like that's just something that we can just decide to do as a culture. Um, and so there's like gender equality, like literally like we achieve like a level of gender equality for everyone in criticizing like how we have this binary gender and expanding our idea of gender um in all these ways there's that that's like something that like whether you're trans or not there's like a level of equality there in gender all righty old girl but let's not forget what it was that got jk rowling banned she wished to refer to herself as a woman because people suggested getting rid of the word woman and replacing it with people who lead you can't make this stuff up. I'll repeat that because it's so deranged, it's hard to believe it's true. Deranged activists like yourself wish to ban the word woman and instead refer to people like yourself as people who lead. When JK Rowling made a tweet suggesting we used to call such people women, that set off a firestorm from people like yourself. When it comes to like racial equality, is there really like equality where exclusively white people, because white people can, you know, kind of be more racially androgynous if they choose to be? Um, for me, like I can't just be like, hey, everyone, I'm white. Like, have you seen <laughs> the, um, you know, that the I'm, Atlanta? I'm, 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 I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it because I look just like this nigga. Go go ahead. <laughs> 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 <No>. <laughs> <laughs> this nigga did the meme. Um, that was amazing. Somebody clip this. Um, scream. Um, yeah, Fuck like you. like the Atlanta clip where this person's like, "Hey, like I identify as a white man," and he's like, mm -hmm. "I'm gonna go under my operation," and then he just like wears like a blonde wig. He's like, "I'm white now." It's like that's what I'm saying. Just, like, it's, you it's, can't. It's it's, it's different. It's it's, it's, ahead, I'm sorry, it's different in the way where it's like racial equality is not. A world where like there's white people who get a tan and then they can like pretend that they're like part black and then black people put on a blonde wig and say that they're white now but then still get you know face racism every day like i i think whistle i'm sorry real quick and the dog whistle there is that that's how she sees trans women more transphobia more dog whistles that's right you ruddy blighter well spotted old chap Sure. Mm, yeah. Mm, mm. So I just like, I think these are like, I think just in that, those are like two fundamentally different, different right, conversations. Right. Like, they function differently. You're... Maybe, maybe one day, like, I don't, I hope this is upset. Like maybe one day, maybe one day we can get in a world where people or white people can like feel like they're black because they are a part of black culture or something like one day in like a racially equitable world, maybe we could have that conversation, but we're just, we're not really like, that's not how we get under socialism, the cookout is back open, y'all. Don't even under socialism, the cookout is back open. But we y'all, y'all, y'all doing the socialism? Yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah. Over here. I'm doing my own <laughs> shit. Y'all do that shit. Them. I'm doing something else. I just want that out there. But but to conclude, it's like how do we get to racial equality? How do we get to gender equality? And those roads look different. And, that, and, and gender equality includes trans people. Racial equality doesn't include white people pretending to be black or black people putting on a, on a blonde wig. I, I, I mean, I, I mean, look, like if, 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 if we, if we want to be, if you want to take the criticism, right, that people, because I think this is probably true, especially if you're white and you're on the left, you don't know how to talk about gender versus race as separate things, right? So if you want to take that seriously, you want to talk about it, let's talk about it. Gender and race are both social construct, correct, but that doesn't mean that they're the same thing. They can't be because they're different things, right? 
if it was just enough that something's a social construct for it to be comparable this way, then we could just we could just everything would be a fucking a single fucking sandwich or whatever. But this is not how it is, right? Gender functions differently from race. Gender, in in large part, also functions on like how Hold people pause, perceive pause, pause, you. Pause real quick. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yo, we're being nice to kidology in the chat. Oh, I want to be nah. very clear to that. Hey, ban them. If they if they if they said some shit funny, we're, ban we're not I ain't playing that. Kindology. We're critiquing. We're not insulting. We're not casting aspersions. I don't think Kidology is a grifter. I don't agree nope. with her politics, and I definitely am very bothered and disappointed by this video. But we're being oh, nice bothered. to Kidology in the chat. I just want to be clear. All right. Yeah, for a, hey, if they said that because we said that shit when we yes. jumped off and you came here, hacked funny. Don't even give them a second chance. Ban the motherfuckers. We're not right. playing shit. So so uh, it, it's, damn, I gotta. I can't even make people. Um, you keep going while I figure out how to make people moderators. All right, all right, all right. So, but so if we're talking about how gender functions versus how race functions, right? It both a lot a lot of it functions upon appearance. That's true, right? I can't go and get estrogen and be white. That ain't that ain't how that shit works. I'm on estrogen and it's gonna change my body, right? Because our bodies from at least my understanding is, is mostly function on hormones, actually, right? But race don't function on hormones. That's melanin content, right? That's that's your hair. It's your it's your cultural expression. The way I'm talking right now, if you didn't even see my face, you hear how I'm talking right now, you know what this means. Because it, it don't sound funny. I'm not I don't sound like a white person trying to imitate a black person. You feel me? Like right. it, it, it functions in a different way way it ain't it ain't the same thing so you're going to say oh we can look at it holistically and we can compare it like no like you can't because they're just different they 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 connect and inform one another that's true that's true but they don't function the same way you can't inherit your gender you can't yeah. really inherit your race but you kind of you inherit the inherit consequences your of your race yeah you know yeah the, the, so note, the note that i had written down was that like i feel like race is conferred upon you a lot more or a lot of people have a, a have a more of an experience of race being conferred upon them than like gender where like the norm to, is to think gender being expressed outward and to me like that's how i see how they're fundamentally different things right because a lot of our issues with race is the fact that it doesn't it, it, the light skin problem right the paper bag test is like <laughs> Like when I when a person no I not me I'm, the light skin I'm, problem I'm, right you know, <laughs> <laughs> don't start. As, as as light skin I'm screaming that's funny as hell the paper dude. bag test right like, like I'm I've never I, I've never had to go through that right I'm, I'm I'm ambiguously black but if you go through life knowing that you could hit a, a a street corner and some person confers whiteness upon you because you're no longer or non blackness upon you you mm. realize that like well really race is not really I I don't get to decide that a lot mm -hmm. right it's, it's something that that just happens to me and there's not really a way for me to affirm it i mean i, sh I mean like all the other ways become be racist but like there's not like racial affirming care the way that like there's a um a, a gender affirming process i guess if that makes yeah. sense the, right the, and the, uh, hold the, up but before before you do that before you do that i want to make sure i say something too because i don't want trans people or really anybody in the chat to hear this wrong i used estrogen as an example taking estrogen doesn't make me trans but go ahead, yeah. go ahead. Pete. Yeah, and that's yeah, that, and that's kind of at the core of this argument's problem is a genuine, I think, more sort of a misunderstanding of transness and essentially a perspective on transness that is transphobic is what it comes down to. Mm -hmm. I'm not seeing mm -hmm. transness as a real thing or a thing any more real or a real thing like being a woman or gender expression. Like it's that's what it comes down to. I think you get the general idea. Transphobic dog whistles, internalized racism, FD's vocabulary of four or five words, God knows what else. When I was 10 years old, we moved to a new suburb, and there was a group of extremely violent people. It doesn't matter who they were, it doesn't matter what their background is, they weren't black people in case you're wondering. But this group was extremely racist, extremely aggressive, extremely violent made death threats and rape threats every day. And as a 10 year old child, I innocently mentioned this at school. I said, this particular group of people are extremely aggressive. That was when I was canceled for the first time. It was as if I had dropped a nuclear bomb. 
I had identified a group of people. If you walk down certain streets in Glasgow, in Scotland, you might find yourself attacked by a group of Scottish youths. If you walk down certain streets in Ireland, you might find yourself attacked by a group of Irish youths. If you walk down dangerous streets in any country, you might find yourself attacked by a gang of thugs. Nobody would mind if you said, those Scottish are very violent or those Irish are very violent. As a 10 year old child, I just said, this group of people are very violent. They're always threatening to kill us. On top of that, they were extremely racist towards us. Now I get it. Racism isn't something you worry about if you're white. I understand. It's completely different. And now for the last 30 years, I have been unable to talk about events that happened all throughout my teenage years, where myself and many other people were relentlessly attacked. It is only my experience of extreme childhood violence over a very long period of time. And my many years boxing and kickboxing that prevented me from becoming a victim. But many people I knew were beaten into unconsciousness and then had their heads repeatedly kicked against a wall after they had been knocked unconscious for committing the crime of walking down certain streets while being of my background. Now this happens all over the world, it's happened all throughout human history, but we are forbidden from talking about it. And this has caused very great divisions and I truly believe this has caused a lot more racism. Refusing to let us speak about our own experiences has caused a lot more racism. You are causing more racism. Your actions will incite more racism, not less. You are overplaying your hand. You need to focus on the big issues that matter, not on jumping on so-called microaggressions, dog whistles, and other bullshit. In order to be fair to Mr. Signifier and his friends, we have to know the absolute depths of pain that is behind their beliefs. So I recommend going to Project Gutenberg and reading The Life and Times of Frederick Douglass, an American slave, as told by himself. Both Frederick Douglass and Booker T. Washington are two of my very great heroes. I do not believe I have ever read a book with more power to change people's lives and more power to convince people of what they are truly capable of than Booker T. Washington's masterpiece, Up From Slavery. It is one of my life's goals to get every single person I meet to read Up From Slavery as it is the most life-changing book I have ever encountered. This book teaches every single one of us of the extraordinary power we have to change our own lives. If you are watching this now, please type Up From Slavery, Project Gutenberg, into Google. You can read the entire book for free. No sign up required. Marcus Aurelius's Meditations, also free on Project Gutenberg, was the book that taught me the art of Stoicism and taught me how to have a calm and rational mind in the face of immense difficulties. My thanks to Codology, FD and his friends. Please go and check out their channels now, headbutt that subscribe button, give them plenty of likes and watch their videos. We may vehemently disagree with them, but they have a right to their own beliefs and they have a right to their own freedom of speech. Besides, it's only a matter of time before their own kind bite them on the ass and force them to wake up and see reality. Any moment now, take a moment to headbutt that subscribe button and give at least 10 likes. Until next time, you transphobic bastard.